Hi, I'm John Green, and for those of you who are just joining us on this channel, basically for 100 days, my best friend Chris and I are attempting to make our lives healthier in every way. We're doing that by exercising and eating well, and I'm also meditating, which I hate. Now, these type of life changes don't always go according to plan. At this point, we're about 30 days in, and I'm realizing that this stuff can be very hard, especially the meditating. Did I already mention that I don't love that? Anyway, if you've ever found it difficult to make sustainable change in your life, maybe you can relate. It's been about a month since we all wrote our New Year's resolutions, and according to research from 2002, about 64% of people continue to abide by those after three to four weeks, so 36% of us need a motivation boost. And that's what we're here for today. So before we started this 100-day project, we got some advice from my marathon running friend, Craig Benzine, and now it seems like a good time to check in with another friend who has an inspiring physical and mental journey, Josh Sunquist. I was really active growing up. I played a lot of soccer. I played Little League Baseball for a little while, but soccer was like my main kind of sport. And then I was diagnosed with cancer when I was nine years old and I lost my leg. And so there was a time when I was kind of looking for new sports that I could still do with one leg. So while I was still on chemotherapy, I had the opportunity to go with my rehab hospital to the local ski resort in Virginia where I grew up to learn how to ski. And I immediately, like grabbed onto skiing because it was kind of a thing that I could do with one leg. In fact, I could go as fast down the mountain on one leg as anyone else could on two legs. And I got really serious about that and really wanted to go to the Paralympics. That became like my goal and I started training in a very serious way. I actually graduated high school a semester early so I could move out to Colorado and train full time in Winter Park. I was like just barely good enough to be named to the US Paralympic ski team. Like it was literally like they took the top 20 people and I was like number 20. It's so awesome to be a part of a team that is representing your country on the international stage and to be there at the Paralympics in a sport that I would have never otherwise participated in. You know, I never would have skied had I not lost my leg. So it's just been in the last few years that I've had the opportunity to play on the US amputee soccer team because it's a relatively new adaptive sport. It's such a personally meaningful thing to be able to do because soccer was the sport that I played when I had two legs. It's literally better than I could have imagined. And I don't say that hyperbolically, like I would have never imagined that this would possibly be a thing that would have happened in my life. I think that having a sport to play and having a team that you're on is like a really good motivation for any sort of like fitness goal. Having that um, sort of social accountability is a great way to stay motivated sort of on a day-to-day -day basis because you're like, oh, I'm doing this so that I can get better at that event or so that I can be a part of my team and I can contribute to my team's success like when we're competing. So I have like a daily mental health routine that I've sort of developed for myself. These are the four things that I find to be really, really beneficial to me in terms of reducing stress and increasing uh, just like positive connectivity to the world and to my relationships. And those four things spell an acronym, uh, GERM with a J. So J stands for journal, which is just a free association journaling of just whatever is on my mind, whatever I'm worried about, just kind of stream of consciousness, getting that out on the page. E stands for exercise. Study after study shows like that exercise is really essential, not just for like your, your body and the way your body functions, but for releasing like positive neurotransmitters in your mind that just make you feel better. Like a lot of times I hear people say, what's the ideal like fitness routine or what's the ideal like activity for getting in and staying in shape? And the answer is very simple. The ideal activity is the one that you do every day. Like, that's it. It's finding a thing that you enjoy enough that you naturally want to do five times a week, six times a week. R stands for reading. Uh, specifically, I try every day to read something that uh, helps me in a mental health sense. So it might be reading something about mental health or reading something about uh, letting go of stress or letting go of anxiety. And M stands for meditation. For me personally, meditation is really the cornerstone of my mental health routine. I mean, we have this thought 
stream in our mind, this voice, right? That's like, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. There's this problem, this thing. And it's like all these things that we have to fix, right? And we have all these like problems in our lives. Meditation is just watching those thoughts and just saying like, those are thoughts, those are thoughts, that's a thought, that's a thought. And instead just sort of being more in your body as opposed to being in your mind because your body doesn't really have thoughts. So your body sort of has uh, a lot less anxiety going on than is going on up here. So my advice for people who want to start meditating is to approach it with, uh, first of all, like an open mind. Uh, secondly, with the expectation that it probably will take you a while to kind of find maybe the type of meditation or mindfulness practice that works for you. I've tried like a lot of different techniques over the years and I don't think that any one technique is necessarily magical, but I think that learning a number of them is useful. For the people who could really benefit from meditation, it is a really, really hard thing to do. Really uncomfortable, really difficult, and really counterintuitive. Just the idea of meditating, which is to say like sitting still, literally doing nothing, like that's kind of the definition of meditating is actually doing nothing. It's very uncomfortable. From a place of like a busy mind and a stressed, a stressed body, meditation sounds so crazy, but then if you can get to that place of relaxation, then you realize how important it is. But like crossing over that bridge is incredibly difficult. So that's the M, which stands for meditation. So germ, journal, exercise, read, meditation. I try to do all four every day and I find that to be uh, really, really essential for me in maintaining a baseline level of uh, like just functionality from a, a mental health standpoint. Thanks, Josh, for always being an inspiration to me and for some much needed advice. And I know I need to work on the M in germ. It sounds like it might take me more than 100 days to get a handle on that though. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I can do that, Josh. I might just be a jer, not a germ. If you wanna see how the rest of my journey with Chris has been going, there's a link to a playlist for the entire series in the video description below. For the record, my mental health acronym would have to include a B for binge watching and also an A for anxiety, comma, feeling. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.